the morning. What's your comment? Hey, I wanted to thank you for writing the article. Hopefully it helps parents uh, get uh, choice vouchers. I sent my son to Altoff Catholic High School, and it's 9000 a year. And I sure wish that I could have used a voucher to send my son there. Mm. Thank you so um, much for saying that. Yeah. And, and um, I really I appreciate all your hard work. I'm, I'm glad that you got it out there because there's a lot of people that you're a voice for, and I appreciate you. Oh, thanks, Melly. I appreciate that. We're, it's the same for us. Uh, vouchers would help us out a great deal. Um, but uh, the way it will be implemented, the way that I'm proposing, it wouldn't impact families like my husband and myself. Not immediately. Our kids will probably be graduated before it ever got to us. But I'm hoping that if you start with the kids with the most need and work your way out, that everyone would eventually have the opportunity to send their kid to the school of their choice and utilize their tax dollars to set those costs. And that private schools... And public schools would flourish instead of what people, naysayers say, oh, it's going to destroy all the schools. It's not going to do that. So thank you so much for calling, Melanie. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, so is our interview, I'm I'm on my show sheet. Am I interviewing Jim Talent now? I yep. think I see him in the, you okay, sure? let's get straight to him right away. I'm going to keep him waiting. Oh, it's yeah. at Jim Talent, AEI.org. He's one of my favorite people. Hey, Jim, welcome to Almond in the Morning. Hi, Stacy. Hey, how are you? All right, so let's talk. Um, well, first of all, we got the inauguration. We got the protesters. Um, tell me what we should be expecting because we're so close. It's like we're within striking distance, Jim. We're going to get to the inauguration of Donald Trump on Friday. That's the whole day. And then Monday he starts working on behalf of the American people. What can we expect? Well, I mean, I imagine he'll start working right away. After, first of all, He'll want to, but second, he's not going to have a lot of choice. You know, I I think we're going to see, uh, and this is what I'm really looking for, we're going to see Trump in his inauguration speech and then in the first few days really begin to flesh out some of the policies that he's been talking about. And I expect we'll hear some things about how he's going to get the economy moving again, uh, what he wants to do in terms of his strategy for foreign policy. I mean, I, I, the speech to me is what I'm going to focus on. Now, I hope that the day passes relatively peacefully. I'm sure there'll be some disturbances given, uh, you know, the nature of his opposition. You know, but I'm hopeful the day isn't marred by that and that that isn't the top-line story people mm. take away from it. Me too. I I actually, I echo those sentiments, Jim. One one of the things that I'm most concerned about is that there might be someone who's successful in pulling something off, even with all the preparations that they've made, that would completely right. mar, I'm, you know. There's huge numbers of people there. It's going to be, I mean, that's a real challenge uh, to, you know, to, to control and, and monitor that kind of a crowd. Now, they're good at it, and they obviously have had time to prepare for it, but, uh, I, I have some concerns about that, so, but but I'm going to be watching the speech and then the pronouncements that come thereafter. There'll be the usual flurry of activity in the first couple of days, executive orders and that sort of thing, but then he's really going to get going. So this is an exciting time. I expect this session of the Congress uh, to be one of those generational sessions where they actually produce a lot. I know they want to. Uh, I, I, I know they, they know they need to, so we'll we'll see. Uh, but I'm, you know, I go into it with some high hopes. Uh, so, and and let's kind of connect those two things. So you've got, I, I agree with you. I'm very hopeful about, especially looking at the detail in the 100-day plan and looking at what he's been able to accomplish between the actual election and now just with his Twitter feed and, and how the liberals are going so crazy about that. But Jim, let's connect those two things to Missouri. So one of the things that he's talking about doing is his school choice initiatives, bringing school choice to inner cities in America to begin with. And that's something that Governor Greitens has also done discussed. And the legislature, we have huge Republican majorities, super majorities. So it seems like everybody's of the same mind. Do you think they're going to come up with something that actually works and makes an impact for uh, kids who are in these failed school districts? I do. Uh, I think you're going to see more of that activity on the state level because education is still and should be mostly a state issue. But I think you're going to see some pretty substantial experimentation and some encouragement on the federal level. I mean, he couldn't have sent a clearer signal than, than he did by appointing uh, Betsy DeVos. I mean, yes. if, if, if there's one person who wants parental choice in education and believes that's better for the kids, 
uh, it's 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 she. And so, you know, I do expect to see that. But again, the form that's going to take is one of the things I'm going to be looking to see in uh, you know in the first couple of weeks. I think probably we'll have to wait till her confirmation because I think that'll probably come through her office rather than directly from the president. Although you don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> Trump feels free to comment uh, on anything that he wants to comment on. So we may get some clues in the inauguration. Mm, I, I, I love that. So um, you, you mentioned the speech, and I kind of want to go back to that a little bit. Often the inaugural speech sets the tone, really, like you come out of that with a feeling for who and what is about to it's it's a tra- tra- transition from one ethos to another, one culture to another. I mean, the president really ushers in through their administration and through the things that they say and do a different era. We're coming out of the Obama era, going into a Trump era. Um, I, he didn't give any cl- clues when he was on with um, uh, he was on with a Fox News host and they were talking about the the speech. What are you thinking? Like, what are you expecting? Do you have any clues at all? You know, I kind of think that what he's going to do is he's going to take some of the things that he's talked about, uh, you know, the needs of people who've been left behind in the economic change that's come with globalization. He's going to talk about that, I believe, and I think he's going to try and put that in a way that uh, that appeals to people outside of those that are now in his coalition. That's typical in an inauguration speech. It's it's a personal kind of statement. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's worked on it a lot, uh, and and I think you're right. It's going to tell us a lot about the tone that he wants to set. Uh, you know, beyond that, it's it's hard to say. I mean, he's been so busy doing so many, uh, you know, things in terms of appointments and statements about uh, taxes and and economic policy and foreign policy and the rest of it. But I don't know that we have a real clue. So. This is one of these times we may not have a whole lot of a preview, you know, which is one of the reasons to watch it. I mean, I certainly, that's the part of the day, the actual swearing in and then the speech that I always watch. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I can live with or without some of the performances. <laughs> Me no too. disrespect intended, but if I want to watch performances, you know, I don't tune in generally. You know, it's kind of like... I don't watch the Super Bowl for the halftime show. I know Absolutely. some people do, but I don't. Well, so. thank you so much, Jim, for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. At Jim Town on Twitter, AEI.org. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Stacey. All right, we'll be right back. We all tend. 